Yeah, so this is our our third month long camp. We have about a week left, so we're we're gonna finish up and leave Wednesday and head to. I you might know, but it's a it's not the it's the Irvine meet, but the one that's after. I I don't yeah. really know the, the details of it, but it worked out better for our our timing coming off of camp. Okay. Yeah, I think it's the grand challenge, I want to say, but yeah, I think that might be it. Yeah. Okay. Um, nice. So, I mean, like you said, it's your third month, third one month camp at Colorado Springs and and you've been doing this for quite some time now. Just um what's how do you feel like the camp has gone for you personally so far? Oh, uh... There's a little ups and ups and downs. Um, my last camp that I went to, I was as good as I've ever been. Um, a month long. It was it was mainly run by Eric, who is now Bob's assistant. But Eric is my longtime coach. He was Bob's assistant for me when I was in North Baltimore, and he is one of the few coaches that Bob really trusts. To you know, he, he he's like a mini Bob. He's he's not much different as far as training style. We're we're still doing all like the the same you know, like the historic sets that I was doing since I was 13 years old coming up to altitude, you know, like the, we get to Wednesday on the second week, we get to Saturday on the third week, uh, like those type of sets. So we all did, we did all the cornerstone sets. The camp ran very similar, Um, but it's phenomenal there. And then we come up here and uh, Bob's been uh, kicking my butt a little bit. So we, uh, we came off of a, a, I am ladder. It was a pretty tough. We went Wednesday of last week. We went fast. And then Thursday was kind of, it was like, it was general, but we were doing 200th breaststroke pull max. (laughs) And then we get into Friday and it was um, right off the bat, 800 freestyle, um, white and pink from the start into an 800 IM. And then like all the, then alternating free and I am all the way down. Um, and that was, uh, pretty brutal. And then we had another workout after that. <laughs> and then Saturday we did three, two hundreds broken fly. So I got into Monday and I, I, you know, I still think I can swim and train at my highest levels. The biggest problem with me now is recovery. And I can tell you after I go through a week like that, <laughs> I don't really feel refreshed on a Monday as I did when I was younger than 25. So, um, I'm kind of coming out of the hole right now. Um, today was just a, you know, a general, um, go at your own pace, 5,000, and then we're going to go fast tomorrow. And then, you know, I don't really know what the rest of the week looks like, but I'm, I'm saying (laughs) I was pretty bad Monday, Monday and Tuesday. So, um, today was very welcomed. (laughs) Yeah, that sounds, that sounds really intense. Um, I mean, like you said, you've learned, you're you're physically at your best, which is pretty astonishing. But um, you have to put an emphasis on recovery. How have you learned to do that? Just in the past few years, as you've aged in the sport, um, what does that look like for you? Putting that more well, of an emphasis on recovery. A lot of this, a lot of this is uh, my injuries that I've gone through. Um, like twenty end of 2018, 2019, um, my shoulder, and then um, right before the Olympics when I basically couldn't do breaststroke for four months because my groin and my hip was so inflamed and I had tears. And like, I, I, I would take a week off and I would take one breaststroke kick and I would instantly feel the pain. Like I'm about to tear my groin. Um, and it was, it was more of a learning experience that I had to take a step back because the problem was, wasn't the injuries themselves weren't great, but the problem was I was largely invincible until I was like 25. Like I, anything, no matter if I felt tired, sore, I would go into practice and I would have phenomenal practice. I never had bad workouts. I was consistently great every single day. I trained really great. I recovered really great just naturally. And then I got injuries that I couldn't overcome. And that was the hardest part is, you know, tone the ego down a little bit and be like, all right, you need to actually start taking care of your body more. And really right around that time, I was, you know, I'm, the first one at the pool every single day, about 40 minutes early, I go through an entire, you know, groin and hip activation routine, um, stretch foam roll. And that's, you know, 40 minutes before every single workout. So I do a lot of stuff like that. That's preventative. Um, you know, I focus more on my recovery than I ever did because, you know, when I was 22, I would get broken down and killed in a practice. And then I would just 
go home and then wake up the next day and be fine. But it's, it's not the case that that stuff lingers for me for a f- multiple days now. So, um, you know, honestly, it's been great. Like it's, it's been a great learning experience for me, but it was, you know, it was tough to, you know, really overcome that and, and really find out what works for me, what my routine is, what I need to do to be successful. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, I mean, it's, it seems like, it, you are finding success right now, just in terms of having, you know, some of the best workouts you ever have and being at your physical best. Um, mentally, you've been through this rodeo a lot. Uh, this is your fourth Olympic trials, I think. Um, yes. And I'm guessing it's, you've had a, a very different mindset heading into each one. Um, how are you feeling heading into this one? I feel great. I, I, I feel excited for the opportunity um you know i get a lot more grateful of of really the journey that i've i've gone to like i went to 2012 trials and i didn't really think i was gonna make the team there but uh, i mean i i remember vividly going into finals of the 200 and the 400 i am like being right next to michael and ryan and I just, and i just watched those guys blow right by me but um you know, that really set the stage on, you know, the excitement, the, the, how bad you really wanted this, what you need to do to go through that. And then from 2013 on, I've been on every single major U S international team, um, consistently every single year. And I, I talk a lot with, um, Ryan Murphy about that. One of my best friends, um, very similar minded to me in, in, in a lot of regards, but, you know, we, we talked through it going into Tokyo, how it, how different it was compared to our first one, you know, the first one, I mean, Bob will tell you that was probably the only time he really saw me with like visible nerves and stress before that. He was, he told me that he's like, dude, just get, like get to the ready room and stop thinking. And I think that's that's one of the aspects about me that I've always done really well is I I manage that really well. I I don't think I've really uh you know outside of like some external factors that I was dealing with at the time, I've always if I was full healthy and and ready to go, I've I usually tended to perform pretty well. Um even when you know it's the most stressful and it's the loudest environment that you could possibly deal with in swimming, but I've always done really well in those situations. And you know, obviously going into, you know, 2021 trials, everybody's dealing with all the madness and craziness of, you know, just trying to make things work and with what little we could. So going into that Olympics, it was obviously very bizarre, um, not having anyone in the stands, but, you know, Team USA did a great job cheering us along and and that was helpful. But I think we're all very much looking forward to going back to normalcy and, you know, having, a a normal year, a normal Olympics, a normal trials. So um, I feel excitement. I'm excited about the next few weeks. I'm very excited to get some rest. Um, But, you know, that's, that's part of the job. Yeah. And and I'm, I'm guessing you've had, uh, you you mentioned Ryan Murphy as as one, you know, mini support system or or person you lean on. Um, Can you, can you talk about some of the other support you've had along the way, you know, some of your sponsors that have, that have, that have helped you to this point in this cycle? Yeah. So, I, I mean, I have a, I have a lot of great sponsors right now. And when we're, we're talking about swim trials specifically, um, Lily is, is based out of Indianapolis. Their headquarters are right behind, you know, the Colts stadium. So they are going to be the, one of the sponsors and supporters of us Olympic trials and the broader, you know, team USA sponsorship. Um, partners. So I'm thrilled to be partnered with them. Um, you know, their message of, you know, everybody has odd stacks against them, but, you know, there's always a way forward and there's, there's good you can do, um, really resonates with me as an athlete myself. Um, aside from Lily, I've got Delta and then, um, Nulo and I can't say enough great things about them. Delta. I mean, if you would have told me pick any sponsor, in the world that like you're very close with like people that know me know that I, I've been Delta hardcore for a while. Um, having flying that flown out of Atlanta, um, countless times, I was very proud to, to hit diamond medallion. <laughs> I took, a, I took unnecessary flights to you know get my mileage up one year, but them and then, um, Nula, which is a phenomenal, um, dog company, um, Michael Landa, former swimmer based in Austin, but, um, you know, 
really taking care of my dog and all of his needs. And it's, it's been incredible for him. So I'm very fortunate to have all support from across the three. And um, with trials coming up in Indy, I, I think it's the partnership with Lily is phenomenal. Uh, so, so just last question to wrap this up here, as you mentioned, trials are coming up in Indy uh, under a month, I think. So it's, it's month today. Yeah. It's um, it's, it's quickly approaching. Mm -hmm. You've obviously raced in Indy so many times and you've been to trials enough to know what that environment is like. What do you feel like uh, a trials in Indianapolis, no less in a football stadium um, is going to look like, and is going to, how is that going to level up? this Olympic trials experience to, I, I'm guessing something like we've never seen before. Yeah. I mean, you've, you've been around enough swim meets across the country to know that there's, there's a reason why we keep coming back to Indy, which uh, it feels like, you know, we're there once a year, a big meet is there once a year, there's an NCAA is going on. It's an incredible sports town. Um, it brings in more general fans than, you know, just about any other area that we go to in the country. Um, you know, obviously swim parents travel and that's a bulk of, of the stands for us and what we're used to, but um, there's a lot more casual interest from the city itself than really just anywhere else. And, you know, the swimming history in Indy is, is unparalleled, you know, a past uh, or past host of many Olympic trials for, for those who are, you know, swim nerds or looked up to, you know, a lot of the the heroes in the sport, like I did, they, you know, they qualified for their Olympic teams in Indianapolis. And then obviously it was, what was it? Long beach and then Omaha ever since, but um, you know, we, we've kind of come full circle. And then this is also the, you know, the hundred year anniversary of the U S swim trials being in Indianapolis going into the Paris games a hundred years ago. So um, there's, there's a lot of just general history that works together. The city's always been phenomenal. You can get a good, good meal, get a good steak. Um, I think a lot of the, the high level swimmers that have done it for a long time are very comfortable in Indy.